Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God is good. And shalom. God's peace. To each and every one of you. I thank God for you this morning. I thank God for his many blessings. We have already completed one month in the year 2020. Oh, that's kind of, kind of weird to say. 2020. But uh, God is good. He's allowing us to see another day. And another time, I thank God for that. Those of you who are kind of new to this, we've made some changes in how we are operating. Therefore, we are uh, having our Sunday school start at 9.30. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> you adults, we have Sunday school. Mm -hmm. It's not just for the children. We had a wonderful introduction this morning, and that was yeah. good. So we're going to be digging into... Uh, our Sunday school, the children. It's good to see you all here so that when we have our 1030 service, everybody is in the main Amen. Service. All right, all right. Amen. 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 I want you to think that this word is just for uh, the adults. I got a word for everybody. Amen. Amen. Everybody needs to know about this word so that you can grow in God from the least to the greatest. Amen. 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 All right, so let us pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you glory and praise for all you've done, the things you're doing, the things yet to be done with us, for us, and through us, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone here today, Father. Let this word, Father, be seated into their bodies, into their minds, into their DNA, so that we'll bring forth, Father God, a harvest worthy of the kingdom of God, Father. Continue to strengthen us and guide us in the ways that we should go and everything that we do, Father God. We want to do it for the glory of your kingdom. To spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, Father God. To make sure that everything that uh, we do, the way we speak, how we walk and talk, Father God, will show the grace and the mercy that is given to us as children of God by our Father. We we'll glorify you in everything we say and do. We we'll give you praise in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name, we're praying it and counting it all as done. Amen. 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 I, uh, this message this morning is, is, is very different. I, uh, you know, can I ever tell you to do something and you go, I don't want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, can I tell you to say something? I don't want to say that. The guy gave me this and I'm like, uh, uh, he said, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Just get a word and let them deal with it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I, I can handle that. Mm -hmm. So this morning's message is a stairway to heaven or a highway to hell. Well, amen. Oh, 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 oh. See, some of y'all shaking your head already. But you're going to have a stairway to heaven or you're going to have a highway to hell. Mm -hmm. Stairway to heaven is actually a song mm -hmm. that was sung by an English rock group called Led Zeppelin. Amen. Mm -hmm. This was released in late 1971. A whole bunch of y'all wasn't even thought about mm -hmm. in around 1971. Some of us in 1971, I don't know about you, but yeah, I was doing a whole bunch of stuff in 1971. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what it was. Amen. So don't worry about it. But then there's another song called Highway to Hell. And it was an album with this lead song by an Australian hard rock band called ACDC. Mm -hmm. That was released in July of 1979. So, and recently I heard both of these songs. And I'm like, Lord, okay, that's, 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 I did some research into both songs. And I'm like, Lord, this ain't got nothing to do with the word of God. sermon. Because the stairway to heaven was written regarding a woman who had amassed a lot of money. And she felt that she could buy her way 
into heaven. Mm. By stacks and stacks and stacks of money, she could climb those stacks to heaven. Mm -hmm. That was her stairway to heaven. I'm like, Lord, that ain't right. Mm. And I also looked into Highway to Hell. Now, in Australia, there is a highway. You know, now, here we've got specific speed limits, but in certain places of the world, you don't have the type of speed limits we have here. Right. So there is a highway that is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Speed can exceed whatever you feel like driving. Mm -hmm. But one part of the highway is a very dangerous curve. Mm. And there's been many people who have died on that curve to where they call in this highway the highway to hell. Mm. Mm. So I go, Lord, what in the world mm. are we talking about here? God took me through the word. And I went, uh oh. So here's the word Matthew 7 13, 14. Heaven can be entered only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide enough for the multitudes who choose its easy way. But the gateway to life is small and the road is narrow and only a few ever find it. Man, when you gave me that, I went, wow. <laughs> So there's two roads. There's two ways of reaching a goal. You can go through the narrow gate, which is the gate that leads to everlasting life, or you can take the broad way that leads to damnation. So I got to study. Now there are some roads that are well paved and they have multiple lanes and have very few, if any, detours and obstacles. They are well lit for nighttime driving and they have signs that are easy to read. And they give you the directions for your desired destination so that you can get where you need to go very easy. Because of the ease of navigation and lower risk of trouble, these roads are most traveled by the multitudes. I can remember as a child, we used to go to Zanesville, Ohio. Uh, when I was a child, we used to go to summer camps. And at that time, I-70 had not been formed, at least going out east. So we used to have to take Route 40 which is a rural route. That's right. It got us down only so far, and took another little road to get where you had to go, till we got to Zanesville, and that's how you came back. Mm -hmm. Then as I got older, we found out that I-70 had been created, uh, with the, see, we call them highways now, but we used to call them expressways. That's right. Mm -hmm. The expressway meant a whole bunch of people could get on it at the same time, and zoom, zoom, zoom. 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 Straight path. Didn't have to worry about any detours or curves or anything. You went straight where you was going to go. And you got there a whole lot quicker. Mm -hmm. The expressway. But there are some roads that are unpaved. They can be gravel or dirt roads. They have two lanes and sometimes there's only one lane. They're filled with hills curves, and very few, if any, guardrails for safety. These roads are poorly lit, which means nighttime driving is hazardous. There are very few signs that can actually direct you in the way that you need to go where you can get to your desired destination. And because of the difficulty in the navigation of these roads and the higher risk of trouble, these roads are least traveled on 
by the multitudes. We found that out, and I tell, 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 tell you all the time. We were sure we love to go to Tennessee. And there's main roads that get you where you want to go, but then you get into some of them off roads, and it's all about zip, 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 up and down, round about, in and out, and they're scary. But you do find that you have and can find beautiful scenery in going that direction, but very few people travel those roads. My question to you today is which road will you choose? You can either take the highway to heaven or the highway to hell. God has given us directions or a road map for us to use to make the correct decision. And that decision is for life. For you to live a life that is going to prepare you for where you're going to go in your next journey in life. And that not only lead to blessings here on earth, but will prepare you for a life eternity with God. So many people want to choose that easy road. They don't want to go through situations and circumstances that will cause them to possibly have to slow down. They want to get there and get there quickly. We live in an age of instantaneous satisfaction, gratification. Mm -hmm. We don't want to wait on anything. Mm -hmm. We want it right now, right here, right now. Mm -hmm. One of the worst things I've ever seen was, was, was uh, microwave popcorn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you love microwave popcorn. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you do. You ain't got to do nothing to it. Just take a bag, stick it in the microwave, get a button, yeah. boom, you got popcorn. Mm -hmm. Back in my day, you had to have a pan, yeah. some oil and some butter, yeah. lid, yeah. you had to pour it in, yeah. had to stand there and shake it over the fire. Yeah. You had to wait for it. Yeah. Once it was all done, then you went and got, got you some butter, yeah. put it in the pan. Swear to it got melted, poured over, throw you some salt on there. It wasn't instantaneous, but let me tell you something. Show tastes a whole lot better. Yes. Yes. This is the problem that we deal with today. We want things easy. We want things now. We don't want to wait on anything. How do you ever tell you something? The best things in life are worth waiting for. All right. God's blessings are worth waiting for. Yes. You got to make a choice. And the roadmap that he gives you, the things he's telling you, and how you are to make that choice, he's not only told you how to do it, he's told you which one to choose. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, he says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you that today I am separate for you life or death. I've given you blessing or curse. Oh, that you would choose a life that you and your children might live. We have a generation of people that don't know how to make a good choice. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You think you know about life, but you ain't experienced true life yet. Some of the things you've experienced, some things could be very traumatic. I do understand that. I don't discount young people. Because I'm going to tell you now, some of you young people are going through some things I didn't have to go through at your age. Right. 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 But guess what? Mm -hmm. I did go through them. Mm -hmm. right. Thank God I was at an older age because I got the wisdom in order to tell you that you don't need to try to deal with that right now. Right. It's going to come in time. See you just got to right. wait. All right. See that. See that. We want to be grown today. Today is the time to be grown. Amen. Comes a time when you got to remain a child until that time comes that God says you're ready and able to handle an adult situation. Amen. So choose life. Don't choose death. We don't understand that. God's given you a road map yes. to utilize. Amen. Joshua 1 and 8, he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. What's the book of the law? The Bible. The Bible. Right. Here's 
this road map. But you shall meditate in the day and night that you will may observe to do according to all that's written in it. Everything God's word says is true. Amen. Yeah. It's not a lie in God's word. It's a lie out of warning. Yeah. Yeah. But it's true. Mm -hmm. He says, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Who wants to be prosperous in here today? I do. Who wants good success today? Holly, let me tell you something. If this is a part of what you want, you need to learn how to choose rightly and choose God. All right. Because his way is true. Yes. And he wants the best for you. Thank you. Mark 16, 16 says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Honey, you got to believe in God. Yes. Mm. Yes. We need to know and understand what God has in store for each and every one of us. And he's giving you and pointing you in the direction that you need to go. You need to believe. If you don't believe, you're going to find yourself in worse conditions than you've ever found yourself in. Right. God's not going to give you something that he knows you can't handle. That's right. He's not going to tell you something that's going to turn around and it's going to hurt and harm you. John 3, 16, one of my favorites from God. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son. So that everyone who believes, mm -hmm. everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Your choice is to believe mm -hmm. if you want eternal life. See, eternity is a, is a, is a, is a concept. For a lot of us, it's hard to comprehend. We'll get to that in a minute. See, God never promised you that you would not have a hard time. He didn't promise you easy travels. He didn't say that this road was going to be so smooth and that the directions were going to be so clear. That's what faith is for. For you to utilize the faith God gives you to trust that he knows what he's doing, and he knows how to take you where he needs you to go. Amen. There's a book that was out. I, 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 I was a child, I read it. Great book. I don't come against the author or anything. The book is called God is My Co-Pilot. Anybody ever heard of that book? Or seen that book? It's, it's, it's an older book. Very good. But personally, I don't want God to be my co-pilot. Amen. I want him to be the pilot. Exactly. I want him to. I want. Well, what's the song called? I call it. I now call Jesus take the wheel. Yeah. Father, I want you to be the pilot. I want you at the helm. I want you the one to steer the boat. I want to be the one that's going to follow the way you tell me to go. I want to choose the pathways you're already pointing to me, so that the things I do, I know I have good success. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He didn't say we wouldn't have trials and troubles. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, he told us that we would have troubles that sometimes would seem hard to bear. That don't sound like something you want to go through, huh? Mm -hmm. But guess what? This is life. Mm -hmm. Too many people don't want to go through without having any problems, any trouble. I want everything to be nice and sweet. Can we all just get along? No. You're going to have these troubles. You're going to have these problems. But if you stay in the fight, yes. if you don't quit, if you will overcome every situation and circumstance that you find yourself in. Romans 5, 3 to 5 says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. You know, you notice it didn't say if, mm. Mm. Wait. but it said when. Yeah, yeah, when. Right. Because they're going to come. Young people, they're going to come. Right. You're going to have issues at school. You're going to have issues in your home. You're going to have problems and situations 
If you want to find some ulterior motive or ulterior substance to help you get through, honey, all you need is God. Mm. He says, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Amen. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on. Yes. Sunday school teacher. Yes. Mm. <laughs> to fill our hearts with his love. Yes. He told you, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, I'm going to leave you comfortless. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm coming to you. I'll be with you. I'll help you. I'll guide you. You lean on me, and I'll help you to make it through every situation and circumstance, but you got a choice. Mm, thank you. You can choose to trust God, or you can choose to trust in yourself. Amen. Amen. And most of us don't know what to do with ourselves anyway. Mm. We think we know it. Mm. Yes. But how many times has your way been successful? <laughs> Come on. Huh. Honestly, how many times has the way you looked at a situation mm -hmm. and the thing you've done on your own mm. has caused you great success? Never. And if you think it was, I'm here to tell you it really wasn't you. <laughs> it was either God putting somebody else in your life to help you make it through, or Amen. God put a thought in yes. your head that yes. you thought was yes. yours. Wasn't yours. Amen. 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 Exactly. It was all about God. Amen. Yep. Always. First Corinthians 10, 13. It says, no temptation. I need to back up here. All of us have heard, I've heard it preached. I've heard it over pulpits. I've heard it out of people's mouths. Especially when a funeral's in the day. God won't put more on you than you can bear. Yeah. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever said that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sound good, don't it? Yeah. That's not scripture. Mm -hmm. That's not the word of God. This is the word of God. Mm -hmm. People have taken this and twisted it. But this is what it says. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Honey, your problem is not a new problem. Amen. Your situation is not a new situation. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. So let me tell you something. If you think you're the only one that's ever gone through the problem you're going through, there is no temptation that is common to man. Meaning everybody's going through the same thing, same way, same time. Amen. But it says, and God is Faithful. God is faithful. Thank you. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. All right. Oh, come on. God will put them on you. I ain't been that what God put anything on you. You're going to be tempted. Who are you tempted by? God don't tempt nobody. You're tempted by the enemy to fail, to fall. He says, your boss is on your back. He's riding you. He don't yeah. like you. You need to do something about it. Your classmates, your teacher, your neighbor, they're on you. They, they, uh, this is one of my favorites. They put their trash in my trash can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's trash. Yeah. You got room to eat. Yeah. I wouldn't ask how many have done that, but I don't want to raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Mm, All right. Mm, thank you. When you are tempted. Mm -hmm. See, we want you to think, think that the word means if. If me, well, maybe it will, or maybe it won't. Honey, it's coming. coming. That's right, exactly. Temptation is coming. Mm -hmm. You want a way out of it? You want to be able to not fall to it? The song used to sing says, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Mm -hmm. 
The temptation is not the sin. You yielding to it. That's the sin. You fall and pray to it. You are letting it abide in you and you uh, you're serving it in your body and you're doing the things it's telling you to do. That's the sin. Mm. We got to understand that you got choices to make. And here's the thing about those choices. They have eternal repercussions. Mm. Eternity is a concept that is hard for humans to fathom because everything we do or experience is dictated by time. Mm -hmm. Work, vacations, sleep, eating, school, whatever it is in a finite existence is dictated by time. Ecclesiastes 1 and 8 tells you about time. Add to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. He's trying to tell you everything you do in life is dictated by time. That's it. Amen. That's it. No matter what it is. But God has no time. Eternity is forever and always. You don't know its beginning existence you sure do not know if it has an end. It doesn't. That's why he told you in John 3, 16, you can have eternal life. Well, here, let me tell you something about eternity. You're going to spend it somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. When you pass from live this life into the next life, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. Mm -hmm. The thing is, where are you going to spend it? The road you choose, the life you decide to live, has eternal consequences even now. Don't let the lure of that smooth road cause you to make a bad choice. Amen. Remember what it said, a whole lot of folks is taking the, the wide road, the smooth road. A whole lot of folks because it's easy, it doesn't take any any, any effort, and there's no responsibility. Mm. They are steadily working on driverless cars. Yep. Mm. I guarantee you, those driverless cars are not going to be on the narrow road. No. Mm. no. I pray they ain't on the narrow road. Mm. They'll be on the wide road that has no problems. No situations. But the road that is filled with turns, obstacles, situations. That's what we read about that those troubles cause you to grow in God. In your life situation. Causes you to be prepared for the next step in your life. I don't care if you Five or 55, 65, you don't know everything. No. Amen. Amen. No. I don't know everything. I hear a lot of people use, use a phrase, everybody does this. Oh. Or everybody does that. My question always is, do you know everybody? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I've learned to stop saying everybody. Because I ain't met everybody. I say, well, a few, the ones I know. But you can't say everybody. But you need to understand that God is expecting you to make a choice in your life. Understand that no one knows the day or the time in which their life is going to be required of them. Amen. Amen. We had some very disturbing news last Sunday. I, went, I preached, I went home, had a good meal, got my easy chair and went to sleep. Mm. As I try to normally do on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> but I woke to some disturbing news on my television. Oh. And when I first heard it, I didn't, it didn't really register until he said it twice. Mm. Famous basketball star, Kobe Bryant, killed mm -hmm. in a helicopter incident. And I sat up and I went, wait a minute, this, something, something's not right here, this, this, this cannot be. But it's so true. Here's a man who's all of us seem to have had so much going on in his life. Blessings, retired from MBA, mm. full of money, full of promise, children with the thought of being able to uh, 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 grow up and enjoy even fruits of his past labors mm. and being a mentor to his children and his daughters and those that are still in the basketball world. Mm. All of a sudden now, because of an accident, his life was required of him yes. last Sunday. Mm. I'm sure he did not wake up Sunday morning talking about mm. well I ain't going to make it home this evening mm. he had every intention of going where he was going and coming back home mm -hmm. what about you child of God mm. Amen. Mm. you think just because you're saved that nothing could happen to you mm. Mm. do you know if today is your last day on this earth. Uh, he's getting kind of morbid on me and macabre. I don't care. You need to make sure that you've made the right decision today. Amen. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor? 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2 says, As God's partner, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. Ooh. Don't come to church and enjoy the praise and worship. Enjoy the word and then you go home and don't do nothing that it's telling you to do. Mm. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Mm -hmm. Today is the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. Are you going to make it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You going to work tomorrow? You going to school tomorrow? Do you have that choice? God is wanting you to understand that there are two realms. There's a highway to heaven and there's a highway to hell. There's no, I like that word, there's no medium strip. No. You can't drive down the medium. No. One tire in and one tire out. The Bible says, Jesus said, either you be hot or you be cold. But if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Mm. How many like iced coffee? Beautiful. How many of y'all like boiling hot coffee? How many of y'all like coffee that's been sat on the table for about an hour and then you try to put it in your mouth? It's horrible, isn't it? That's how God feels about us who decide that we either want to play or don't want to play. We in sometime, out sometime, come to church today, 
come Monday morning, we're back doing the same hellion stuff we used to do. Mm -hmm. You're lukewarm. You got to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Today is the day of salvation. I want you to understand how good God is and what plans he has for you. What he wants for you in your life. How he wants you to become wonderfully and awesomely victorious over every situation and every circumstance that comes into your life. Because child of God, they're coming. And you need to be prepared. You need to choose the way you're going to go. Either it's a highway to heaven or a highway to hell. Make a choice. Because today is the day of your salvation. Amen. 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 I want to thank you for watching this video. I pray that you were blessed by it, that it encourages you to have a deeper relationship with God, that you continue to fight the good fight of faith and grow strong and courageous in your daily battles with the enemy. I encourage you to subscribe to our page, like us on Facebook, and log on to our website. There you can submit a prayer request and support this ministry through a financial gift. And remember, if each one can reach one, and a reached one can reach one, then a one one will have one one, and the kingdom will have been advanced one soul at a time. Thank you, and have a great day.